everybody. So when I asked my audience, like, what kind of content would you like me to produce overall? The I saw a big consensus around real world projects, like hands on type things and uh, understanding and getting started there. So that's what I decided to do with this particular video. I'm going to showcase for you a few tools that you can utilize today, right now. Uh, and these are especially designed if so you can utilize like say uh, image generation, video generation, etc. And you don't have to have like a super CPU and a GPU in order to do it because these all are uh, cloud based. And then so uh, I'll show you two on that end and then I'll go you I'll show you um, kind of like um, what is uh, the current what we can currently do with regards towards like uh, like app automation and all of that with AI, which is uh, more advanced, I think, than like the naysayers think and then like less advanced than like the hypers want it to be, but it's, you can do some cool stuff with it. So within that, let's start off with the uh, image and video generation. And then within that, so the first thing is, is that you can run these uh, locally, right? Like you could run any model, like a uh, flux, uh, stable diffusion, uh, one, 2.1, <clears throat> whatever you would want, whatever model you're looking for. Um, you can 100% run these locally if you have enough GPU to do that, which is like not 90% of people plus. And then so within that, the uh, next step would be to run them cloud-based. And then so there's two options. When it comes to cloud-based uh, computing and running these things, the bottom line is, is that you're going to pay per hour. <laughs> and, and then so with uh, this one that we're looking at here, this Run Comfy, it's going to run you like 99, so about like a dollar per hour, like flat to, to run basically anything that you want with regards towards uh image gener or, or video generation uh, and then it's a little bit cheaper for uh image generation whereas like uh something like a run pod it's all um varying and it depends on your gpu costs and, and what gpu you want to run and what gpu you need to run so you have to know that information there but like so like the most prominent one will get you about like 94 cents per minute so it can be uh, a little bit cheaper on the run pod side if you know what you're doing right because it's all like the run pod side is all a gpu based uh whereas this uh run comfy uh it's just basically you just pick what model you want and then it's very simple right um i'll just pick like uh this one and then so we run the workflow and I can see here, I, I know up front it's going to cost me 99, 99 cents per hour. Uh, and then like, uh, they, they have this pro thing that you can do too, but like, I mean, it's 99 cents per hour. <laughs> and then I'm going to get, uh, 11 seconds per image for a stable diffusion XL. So if I want to crank out those images for, uh, during that hour, like I can get a good amount of images. So like, uh, breaking that down cost per image, like you're for, image and video generation like you're not going to find it cheaper than this right <clears throat> that's uh generally speaking uh and, and you this could is generally cheaper and it could be cheaper overall than like uh when you factor in like all of the costs as far as running locally right and and this allows you scalability um on the back end this is kind of like um you know like going cloud-based for anything else overall like any of, of your other like uh business operations etc it's a matter of do you want on-prem or in the cloud uh and then there's pluses and minuses pros and cons to both right the con to this is that you can't control your costs and then so if you want to like if you start running this thing uh 24 7 then that's um your 24 dollars per day is uh what your costs blow up to within that and then maybe you run multiple accounts and you know you can start getting these bills like crazy within that um but so like just starting out this is like really simple the way to go like you want to mess around with image generation it's going to cost you about a dollar per hour like and, and you can do you know some cool stuff with within that hour so for like you know say like five dollars or so uh you can get, get into it and you can get into it just on a base simple level here and then if you want to like you know be even cheaper and, and then crunch your pennies you can go here uh and then they also have these previous generation um cards and then so if you know that you can get away with this you can get down to like 40 cents or 24 cents per hour even like 26 cents uh depending on if you know that you can use like this type of card uh here um and then so you can get the cost down like 
pretty low on something like RunPod. Uh, and then there's other services as well that um, you can utilize for cloud-based uh, computing and then getting these uh, up and running. And then from here, it's like once you have them uh, loaded and then like you run the workflow, uh, it's a matter, it, it pulls up a comfy UI interface. So it'll be like an interface like this. And then you can just like, uh, you would have your LoRa, you can have your prompt, adjust your prompt, uh, and then anything like this. And then it would just be, it would just be this. Uh, in that environment and then from here like uh, you would just hit play and then generate your images or anything that you want right and so it's, it's pretty um, straightforward as to like what these uh, things do overall here and then so uh, within image generation, video generation, etc. Just uh, bottom line, you don't need uh, expensive hardware. Uh, you can run it cloud-based, um, and it will cost you. Let's call it between twenty-five cents to ninety-nine cents per hour um, in order to run. So generally cheap overall, but then again, like those costs can uh, scale up. But so it's cheap to get in. <laughs> it's kind of like, like the uh, bottom line within that. Probably like a lot cheaper than people think over. Overall. Uh, and then so the next and uh, other thing that I want to showcase within this particular video is something that I've been playing around with like uh, quite extensively recently and I've, I've kind of like um, ignored but I know a lot of people in my circle have been talking a lot about Poe overall and then so Poe is essentially they like um, a lot like Poe is cool because you can pay $20 per month and then you get like access to a bunch of uh, like all of the models as opposed to like paying for one of them. Uh, and then like none of this is promotional, like not, not advertising, getting paid for advertising for any of these uh, platforms overall. Just going into like if you want to get started within these things, this is my uh general experience and, and, and knowledge overall within it, right? And then so a lot of my network talks about Poe overall, specifically because of that uh, main reason there, right? It's like, tw I think it's tw $20 per month. And then it's, you can, I'm using it free right now. Uh, and then you get access to like every, any model you want, like, and it's like all of the latest models. So you can use Claude, you can use GP, uh, ChatGPT, you can use Gemini. Uh, you're not stuck to one is the like huge benefit of that. I don't like, I've always wondered how they like make money under that model I, I don't know overall like they must have some super cool agreements on the back end with with all of these providers uh but then the other thing is is that um they've released this uh app creator like and then so this is like uh, i've just been playing around with this app creator and then so this is a particular app that like i built um and I showcased a video on this a while ago where it's essentially like a, a spreadsheet wizard. And then this took me, so I built that, uh, but yeah, literally about a year ago now, like, like, like literally a year ago or so. Uh, and then, uh, I use, I, I utilized AI help within that. And then uh, like I ran through and the code, but it's still like, uh, a week to get it set up and like to this point or so i'd say yeah like like at least a few days right to get it like uh and it was never like this like i never had like this uh type of uh front end interface with it i i and i made it into a, a google chrome uh, extension which is like it's available still on the the chrome extension store i think um uh but so uh within this essentially what it is is it's just like um so you have a data spreadsheet and then you can uh, prompt the model to fill in the missing data and then so in this instance you can see this uh, column c here starting off so q2 to q1 change the model built and generated all of this right and then so this app is essentially just it's utilizing uh, gemini 2.0 pro and i can switch that model out uh, and then it utilizes swarm algorithms uh, to update and make the updates to the spreadsheet so it's like gemini pro is the brain uh, and then it will go through and then make the swarm algorithms to make sure that it, it can actually like update everything within the spreadsheet see i update the data here here's the original spreadsheet and this is the prompt that I gave it, right? Calculate the missing values in column C based on the patterns. I'm going to deploy this. It's going to run. You can see essentially here, like uh, Gemini is going to start thinking about it. And then so it's going to understand the goals. I've been, I'm currently focused on parsing the user's request to build the JSON execution plan. The primary objective is clear. Populate column C, which is currently blank. And then we can see here, so I, I have this just highlighting it, this automation here. It's controlling the swarm right now, right? And so the swarm is figuring out what values it needs to put in there. 
uh, and what values it should be. And we can see it's it's actually populating here. And then so the swarm is doing its work, right? And it's just kind of that visualization, <laughs> like, like you can uh, see the swarm there. Uh, and then there we go, net sales change Q2 to Q1. Uh, and then it populates here. Um, and then uh, these results, like we might want to add on some sort of uh, calculators and, and calculations to, just to make sure that it's like 100% correct. But like uh, just my quick spot check on these, I'm not seeing anything that's wrong or inaccurate within this. Uh, but uh, I uh, no, uh, but so, um, yeah, like I, it, it looks, the math checks out <laughs> overall here. Uh, so, uh, I, I just updated that and then let's do a different one, right? Let's, um, calculate. Cool. So I'm going to give it um, something to do here. So calculate and estimate the cost per product and input into column G. The cost per product should assume a 25% profit margin on each product. And then so it's going to go through and it's figuring out the calculation, currently focused on the formula that it needs to figure out. Now it's immersed in the specifics of the calculation. It's determined the core formula, <laughs> which is just price times 0.75. And then here we go. Now the swarm is going. It figured it found one empty slot there. So it's going to estimate that. And then there it goes, deploying the swarm, filling in values. And our magic spreadsheet wizard uh, did most of the work, but as you can see, again, as highlighted out, right, like it's um, good, but not like it. So it's better than the like uh, naysayers want it to be, but not as good as the hypers, right? So like it's like, um, like even with this like uh, setup, it's still not like 100% uh, great ex like exact execution because these values are still empty, right? It still it didn't uh, capture the values here. Um, most likely, I'll have to make uh, like an adjustment um, here within the the. Um, uh, model itself and I can do that over here right so this is like I can talk to Poe this is like um, giving the spreadsheet wizard and then talking to the spreadsheet wizard uh, and then this is talking to the Poe app creator on this side right and I can just tell it like um, the spreadsheet not update with the column G values I'm just talking about, like uh, what I think the error is and, and what it's related to. And this is what I did there. Yeah, it's, it's just filling the parse. Uh, looking at the code, you see it's likely uh, JSON parsing from the LM response. So, so it's kind of figuring it out. Sweet. And then so now we have our version three of this and then like uh, how this works, it's going to take like uh, credits and tokens. So if I do this again with the version three, it's going to take like more tokens from me. And I'm not sure how many tokens uh, I have on the free plan, but so um, it's now updated within like that. So, so to parse better overall. Right. And this is the, the, as you can see, the third iteration, because the first iteration, it failed the parse. So, but I mean, I just, went through uh, and then made the update here. And then my expectation here is, is that like we go through that same exact request um, for that, like the same question that I asked it there for the G column and it would populate this time uh, and we wouldn't have any issues with the parsing there overall. Um, and then so just be like some minor tweaking if you're looking to like uh, build out and then from here I can publish this app. Um, I can give it a type uh, uh, and then um, name, description, 
uh, and then I publish it. Right now, they don't have monetization settings yet. That's coming soon. Uh, but then from here, I can adjust, I can make it either publicly accessible and I can allow people to like make copies of it and change it around if they want um, or not. Uh, and then the, that's essentially it overall, right? And then we have a live working app that anyone can use. And then so we have our spreadsheet wizard here ready to go, which a year ago, again, it took me a week to build this out. I had to build it out as a Chrome extension specifically, uh, like in a lot of other things. And then there was like, uh, so that extension that I built, it was very specifically, uh, tied into and, and, and uh, it, it, um, accesses Google Sheets, which is much better than our little data spreadsheet here. But, uh, it gives you the core idea, right? I could from here, like very easily allow you make this so that you just uh, upload your Google Sheet or update, uh, upload your spreadsheet. Uh, and then it'll have the same functionality and actually more functionality than than my one that I built out a year ago. Um, and then I'm building it out here on the fly in a matter of minutes. So hopefully like this gives you just a few different directions uh, for like how to get started on a base level with these things, right? Like projects that you can do um, and how to get started. That seems to be kind of like the overall, like a, a, a large theme of this, um, uh, of the feedback that I got. So if, if uh, you enjoyed this type of content, let me know. And if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.